Okay, C. Lindelof videos, Radical Equations, Part 1. Um, we're asked to solve each equation and to remember to check for extraneous solutions. So we'll definitely do that. Here, I guess the question goes to this. The question goes to this. How do, we, how do you start to solve an equation like this one? And either you kind of know or you don't, but if it bothers you, what I say is this. Keep in mind... Keep in mind that this square root is to the second, is the, the index here is 2, there's a little 2 in here, this is the second root of x. And to get rid of the second root of x, what you do is you square it. And also remember, if you just the algebraic rules of equality, if you, if you do anything to one side, you have to do the same thing, unless you're multiplying by 1 or adding 0. So something to think about. And then, this is what we're supposed to get from this, that when we take the square root of a square, it gets rid of this square. So what we get is, this gets rid of the square root, we get is x is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. And we can go back and actually look and see if that works. So we can say, is the square root of 100 equal to 10? It, yes, it is. It's actually plus or minus 10, but yes, it is. So given that, what are you supposed to see here? Remembering again that our goal is to solve for this value in here. This m value is what we're trying to solve for. So some people see, think they're solving for whatever's on the left. That's not absolutely true. It's interesting, but not absolutely true. Again, I'm looking at that radical. So here's our radical right here. Let me get a better color. Here's our radical right here. And it's a squared radical. It's a second root. So how do we get rid of a second root? Right, we can't, somebody say, well, what, can you multiply by 10 first to get rid of this? We're stuck under this radical, so the only way to get out of it is we have a square root to square the square root. And if you square that, you have to square the other side also. So this 2 right here brings down this radical, gets rid of it. Um, I can show you why. If you take the square root of a number squared, you just get that number back, don't you? The square root of 5 squared, well, 5 squared is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5, isn't it? So just something to think about why that works. So again, we get 100 is equal to m over 10. Now just some algebra, right? And what we need to do is we need to multiply by 10 over 1 on both sides. So multiply both sides by 10. And these two 10s cancel. That is, they go to 1, and you get m is equal to 1,000. So... This is actually pretty straightforward. The next problem gives people, I guess, some worry or some concern because what I've seen a lot of students want to do is they want to add or they want to add positive 4 to both sides. But you can't. I want you to remember this. When you see a radical like this, you're stuck under that radical. And the only way to get out of that radical is to use some property of exponents here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to think again the fact that this is the square radical, right? This is a square root. So square radical means it has an index of 2. So what I'm going to use is an exponent that will cancel that out. So when I do this, this 2 cancels this radical and leaves me with just v minus 4 is equal to, remember though, I said if you square, if you do whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So is equal to 9, right? And then we get v is equal to 5, isn't it? Ooh, sorry, that's really wrong. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, so we get v is equal to 13. All right? So, really good. Let's just do one more, and then I'll stop, and then I'll make another video of ones that are a little bit more difficult. But these are relatively simple, I think. So, same thing, right? Hopefully, the first thing you're noticing is, the, is that we have this radical here. And this v minus 2 is stuck under the square radical. We're keeping in mind that a square radical means that it has an index of 2. It's the square root. It's the second root of this number. So to get rid of it, we square both sides. If this was a third root, we'd do something different, wouldn't we? So we're squaring it. 6 squared happens to be 36. But remember, the square root of something squared is the radicand, is this whole thing inside of here. So that leaves us with v minus 2. And we get v is equal to 38. So v is equal to... 38. So I hope this is really helpful. This is really, really math worth knowing because you kind of can't move on without it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, and if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't already subscribed, please do.